Hello everyone, my name is Mark Mandel. I am a developer advocate for Google Cloud Platform, and I'm here today to build a multiplayer backend in four minutes and 51 seconds. Sounds like fun? Cool. So this very silly game that I decided to make, um, you can clearly see I am not an artist, um, is called Paddle Soccer. It's a two-player multiplayer game where you're a paddle and you play soccer. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff. It has a Unity client. It has a dedicated Unity server. Uh, it has some matchmaking code. And it also has some code that uh, controls the dedicated game servers spinning up and spinning down across a cluster in the cloud. So, how am I able to do that inside five minutes or three minutes or so anyway? The cool thing that we have and I talk about a lot and what gets me really excited is a thing called software containers. Uh, people here are familiar with like, something called Docker and some other things like that. Cool. So this is particularly exciting to me because the thing that software containers do is enable us to have a standardization around software and how we run it. So regardless of whether we're running multiplayer systems or such as like matchmaking systems or dedicated uh, game servers, we can make software look relatively the same regardless of like how we want to deploy it, how we want to scale it, whether we want to health check, log aggregation, stuff like that. That means we can build sort of generalized solutions for these kinds of problems that can be deployed to almost any type of uh, software type of problem. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system that came out of Google uh, for doing exactly these types of things, deployment, scaling, logging, all that kind of stuff. We have a hosted solution at Google Cloud called Container Engine, but it's also open source and can be run anywhere. So without further ado, let's actually get stuck into a demo. Uh, sweet, you switched me across. Perfect. Excellent. So I've got a visualization here. What I'm going to do here is get my matchmaker up and running. I've got some uh, make commands. Oops. I'm going to actually deploy in front of people. Sweet. So I'm going to send these YAML files up to Kubernetes. Uh, and we have a visualization on top that shows us the containers that we're going to be running. Uh, the first thing I'm going to get is Kubernetes up and running. It's going to take a little bit to come up. There we go. Come on. <laughs> come on, Redis. Oh, that's not going to work. For whatever reason, it doesn't like me. That's fine. It's demos in front of a lot of people. There we go. Perfect. There we go. There's my Redis instance. Beautiful. Scroll in. Of course, that's tiny. Why not? Because demos in front of loads of people always go right. That's fine. Like, that's fine. We will deploy. Um, what I'm doing now is sending up a bunch of uh, other YAML files, these declarative syntax. We're going to create a five more containers that are going to fire up for us. There's going to be a few there. Uh, so we're going to run this across a series of machines that we have running inside a cluster. Now, we also, you're not going to see it here, but I'm going to deploy a thing called a service that then exposes those matchmaker clients that are running. Uh, WeaveScope's quite nice in that it'll actually show us the, uh, the network activity that is happening between those machines. And we have now a matchmaking system. Like, we have that up and running. That's really cool. What I'm also going to do is deploy um, the code that, um, which I'm called, the, the code that organizes and structures the dedicated game servers that are running too. Um, I'm basically doing exactly the same thing. But the cool thing about this here is that this is like oh, 400, 500 lines of code. Right? This isn't a lot of work that I've had to do to organize and orchestrate dedicated game servers across a cluster of, well, for me, it's three machines, but it could be up to like 2,000 machines. This is a lot of work that I haven't had to do myself. And it's hugely, hugely powerful the amount of stuff I can get to have happen. So cool. Now that's my uh, dedicated game server uh, orchestration system. I called it Sessions for fun. Uh, that's all up and running. So if I go and say kubectl, I just want to get the IP address of, of course, it's pending. Give it two secs. Uh, so I need to get the IP address of the matchmaking system as it comes up so that I can actually run my game. There we go. Perfect. So here we go. There's my IP address. If I come over here, I have my client ready to go. I'm going to run my game and tell it where it is that my game server is running at, which is there. So we'll fire that up, standard Unity little window. Perfect. Of course, it's going to run full screen, because why not? I'm going to send that to another window. We'll do the same thing again. I'd like that to be windowed. That's fine. That'll connect. So what should happen here is now my match is going to matchmaking service is going to say, "Cool, I've now got two machines that are ready to go. I get one, I get a ball, it bounces, yay! So we have two players that are able to play this game." If I flip across, you can see, yay, we have a game. 
Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so. If this all sounds interesting, we'll be talking about this more uh, Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. at our sponsored session, Dedicated Game Server Scaling. We'll also talk about big data and analytics. If you can't get to that, um, I'm at Neurotic on Twitter. I'll definitely be around. You can also get this code at markmandel slash paddlesoccer on GitHub, or feel free to reach out to me, and I'll point you in the right direction. Finally, thank you very much for having me.